you need me to call the blood bank? I can't see anything in here. Yeah. Doctor Lumen, can we start compressions? Let's go Simulation has really uh, taken on more and more of a role in healthcare and providing both individuals as well as teams the opportunity to practice in a safe environment. Uh, patient's tachycardic to 130, blood pressure is... The uh, University of Washington uh, has historically been a leader in the field of simulation. We are an academic medical center and we wanted to develop not only uh, innovation in learning and training, but also research, uh, papers, peer-reviewed um, articles so that people can learn about what we're doing and perhaps take that into their own space and learn about quality and patient safety in a, in a safe in environment. Simulation is completely embedded in the healthcare culture here. That is unique. So uh, it's used not only to teach our students, our medical students, our residents, our fellows, they also believe in its use in training our active clinical staff. And the ability to take the techniques we use in simulation to do that was very powerful. Simulation obviously takes on many forms. And for our department, one of the most tangible is our simulation initiative for our residents, which we call Euristi. As a urology resident, we go through some different modules that are directly applicable to what we do clinically. So we can do surgical skills, we can do robotic skills training. So we do a lot of endoscopy in urology, and so um, we have some trainers that help us with practicing how to put scopes into the bladder and the ureter. And then we can also do team training. So uh, because we're surgeons, we're in the operating room, we work a lot with uh, members of our own teams and multidisciplinary teams. And so we can practice um, scenarios that may be rare or require more coordination between team members and work on that in the simulation center. The estimate is that over 70% of the errors in medicine or in healthcare are related somehow or impacted by poor communication. And therefore, that is a very important target for simulation as a tool to try and improve that number. I've definitely made mistakes in the lab. Um, that it's, it's great because that's what we're supposed to do when we're in the simulation setting. It's good if you fail in the simulated environment. Experiment figure what works, what doesn't work. Um, you want your first bad situation to happen here, not on the ward, not in the operating room, not in the emergency room. My name is Bashak Charu, and I'm an associate professor of pulmonary critical care and sleep medicine. We actually partner with WISH for a lot of procedural teaching, but I think our best collaboration is probably our longitudinal simulation curriculum. We have uh, four simulations that occur over the course of the year, and each is about three or four hours long. And they're really focused on training and leadership. So in these simulations, the fellows are asked to lead an interdisciplinary team. So they work with nurses and respiratory therapists and other trainees. And we specifically ask them to lead their teams in the setting of a low frequency, high impact event. The more realistic or the higher fidelity uh, a simulation is, the more likely we're gonna get buy-in from our participants. So when uh, a heart is beating in front of them and it's a simulated heart, if it looks real enough, it might evoke the same emotions that it would in a real environment. Crest is the development arm of the division where all of the cool simulation tools that we have cooking up in our minds get implemented into a physical form. Here's where the 3D printing occurs, where the sculpting occurs, where all of the assembly and the nuts and the bolts are put together um, by our very talented engineers. This is where the magic happens. At the heart of our department is innovation. As long as we are focused on innovation in all our work, we will continue to provide the best care, to be prepared for what the next generation of learners want, and to solve the most difficult problems in urology. As we continue to develop these applications for education, 
I can see us starting to move as AI continues to develop into actual clinical applications. I can see a time where we'll be able to predict for an individual patient what might happen to them. Understanding that simulation data and com combined with artificial intelligence uh, will open up a whole new frontier, I think, in, in, in healthcare.